controversial, etc. I may have got that wrong. I don't know. Rabbi, right. um, yeah. Rabbi, I've just, yeah. you know how you always have to click if you happy to record it, have this recorded and everything. Yeah. I don't remember seeing this before. It says the content of this meeting is being sent to a third party. No, I haven't. Probably be, that's just because I've just shared it to Facebook. Maybe you've got a newer version of Zoom or something. I don't know. Oh, no, I didn't get that. Um, I didn't either. That, that would probably be why. That's oh, okay, all right. So I'll, I'll take oh, it. Uh, it's nothing sinister. It makes sense. <laughs> all right. Just wanted to check. Thank you. Oh. Honey, right. our Zoom was okay. um, updated um, not long ago. Right. Okay. okay, we're now live. Okay, let's start. One second. Uh, oops, you've got my to-do list there. Right. Uh, here we go. Thanks. Uh, come on. How's it gone? Sorry, just give me a sec. New share PowerPoint. That's, that's frozen. It always does this. Oh, there we go. Can everyone see that? Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. And it's frozen again. One second. It's thinking for some reason. Don't know why. There we go. Right. Off we go. Iris, over to you. The last three of the 10 plagues are visited on Egypt. A swarm of locusts devours all the crops and greenery. A thick, palpable darkness envelops the land, and all the firstborn of Egypt are killed at the stroke of midnight of the fourteenth. Uh, sorry, the fifteenth of the month of Nisan. God commands the first mitzvah to be given to the people of Israel to establish a calendar based on the monthly rebirth of the moon. The Israelites are also instructed to bring a Passover offering <coughs> to God. A lamb or kid goat is to be slaughtered and its blood sprinkled on the doorposts and lintel of every Israelite home so that God should pass over these homes when he comes to kill the Egyptian firstborn. The roasted meat of the offering is to be eaten that night together with matzah, unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Thank you. The death of the firstborn finally breaks Pharaoh's resistance. And he literally drives the children of Israel from his land. So hastily do they depart that there is no time for their dough to rise. And the only provisions they take along are unleavened. Before they go, they ask their Egyptian neighbours for gold, silver and garments, fulfilling the promise made to Abraham that his descendants would leave Egypt with great wealth. The children of Israel are commanded to consecrate all firstborn and to observe the anniversary of the Exodus each year by removing all leaven from their possession for seven days, eating matzah and telling the story of their redemption to their children. They are also commanded to wear to fill in on the arm and head as a reminder of the Exodus and their resultant commitment to God. Thank you. Um, right. So the templates, let's just look at them. Number four, I don't know about this. Uh, number four is wild animals in my book. But they've got a three of them have it as flies, unless it's somehow that the flies. Are, no, I think it's wild animals. So I don't know why it's got flies on there. But um, every, in, in, every... in the um, the hummus, uh, the, 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 um, the, the bits at the bottom explaining, yeah. uh, that yeah. says flies. Does it? How interesting. So I didn't, I've not come across that before. So, all right. I enough. always thought so, it was flies. Oh, I, th I thought it was animals. No, but anyway. I thought it was wild animals. Wow. I never heard of flies before. But when you think of it, frogs would cause lice and they would cause well, flies. The word is arrow and locus is arba. I'm wondering if they're related. I have to look into that. But whichever it is, those are the plagues, just to remind us. We're going to talk about darkness today. Um, it does seem rather out of sequence, right? We've had eight plagues so far, and they seem to be kind of escalating. Sorry, we've had seven plagues so far, correct? Sorry, yes, seven. They seem to be escalating. So the first two, the Nile turned to blood, and the frogs, um, they were kind of omens. I mean, obviously, it was serious not having water to drink, but it was, it was very symbolic. Then you have uh, lice and wild beasts, which certainly cause worry. I don't know if they cause crisis. 
Um, number five, dev air pestilence, that's going to actually kill the livestock. So that's a real serious problem. Um, boils, very uncomfortable. We'll come back to that in a minute. Um, then you've got hail and locusts, which destroy the grain and the farming, right? Leading potentially to famine. And then suddenly you have darkness. Uh, of course, the 10th plague is horrific, but in the middle, you've got this darkness. Doesn't seem quite so serious. Um, well, it is if you walk, you can't see anything at all. You can't feel <laughs> anything. You just try shutting <laughs> off the lights and having the curtains drawn and so there's no light whatsoever and you can't fair. find your way around. You're tripping over all the time. Fair point. Yes, fair point. Um, but there's probably more effective things that would wreak more havoc if you wanted to. So having had plagues that are steadily building up. By the way, let's just talk about boils. Are boils that serious? Anyone yes. familiar with the book of Job? Really? We'll have a look at it in a minute. But if you think about it, leprosy is basically a skin disease, right? Yeah, it was horrible. So um, in the book of Job, you remember it says there was this righteous man, Job, and the Satan came to God and said, ah, well, you know, he's only righteous because he's very blessed and charmed. As soon as you give him any sorrows, he'll rebel against you, right? And he ends up losing, I think, his whole family. And he doesn't waver. And he doesn't even wobble. And the first time he wobbles and he curses his very existence, although he still doesn't turn away from God, is in chapter three, when he's just been afflicted with boils. Let's see. <clears throat> Who'd like to read number one? I'll read if you like. Go on, Julian. After this, Eov opened his mouth and cursed this day. Eov spoke and said, Oh, that the day had perished when I was wherein I was born, and the night which said, There is a man child conceived. Let that day be darkness. Let not God inquire after it from above, nor let the light shine upon it. Right. So, um, by the way, uh, we think we dealt this once before when we talked about self harm, that he seems to be sort of expressing, you know, wishes of ideation almost. Anyway. He doesn't say that when he loses his whole family. He says that when he's got basically itching all over. So they're not to be, it's not something to be sneezed at, sores and boils. Anyway, that's just by the way. Right, let's look at the ninth plague. Here we go. <clears throat> Who'd like to read number two? I'm not sure who's on that can see. I can it, do, sorry. I can do that before my go bell on. goes off. Then Don't the Lord, forget your... Yeah, I, I'm waiting for it to buzz. Then right. the Lord <laughs> said to Moses, stretch out your hand towards the sky so that darkness will spread <clears throat> over Egypt, darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand towards the sky, and the total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. No one could see anyone else or leave his place for three days. Yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. <clears throat> okay, thank you. So we're not saying it's not serious, but it seems almost a bit anticlimactic after the locusts and the hail with fireballs in it, um, balls of fire, and suddenly now it just goes dark. Oh, it goes dark. You go could to it, sleep in this dark. It, Rabbi, could it be two yeah. types of darkness? Like a darkness as in night and day darkness, <clears throat> but also a darkness like a depression. You know, they it comes over yes. as a yes. darkness. Yes. So... There is that, and of course, we it's mental health Shabbos, and we always associate it with the darkness of you know being blind to someone else's needs. There's moral darkness, which we'll talk about shortly, and there's also there is a <clears throat> um another kind of darkness as well. Um, anyone ever heard of a sandstorm, a chamsin? Yeah, that you get you get them in the desert, I think you get them in Israel as well, if you're sort of in the south in the desert can sometimes last several days and basically it, it, you get a whole load of sand and air that's full of dust and it basically you can't see anything right it's not black pitch black it's kind of sand colored but you can't see anything it's like you know constant uh fog basically really so, rabbi you're too young to remember but i can remember the smog in london Oh. And it was, I can remember one time when I was in, I was a teenager, <laughs> and we were sent home early because of the smog. 
and it was really scary. I had to walk home and you couldn't actually see where you were going. And um, I found myself at one point um, where I had to cross a road and it was at a crossroads and I found <clears throat> myself walking and I didn't, I couldn't find the pavement. Right. I crossed a road thinking I would land on the pavement the other side, right. but I'd, I'd gone a bit off not completely straight across and I was walking down the road that joined the one I was crossing I was walking down the middle of the right. road and I couldn't see the houses or the curbs on either side and I didn't know where I was right and it was really scary right proper most of us have never had true proper darkness last time I remember seeing proper darkness besides a couple of times <clears throat> <clears throat> if you go to Epping, it's very dark. And um, people walk their dogs at night, they have like, you know, flashlights. There isn't much street lights, I'm not quite sure why, but occasionally had shivers and things in Epping late in the evening. And you need a torch, basically. You can't see where you're going otherwise. Um in New York, over right in New York City, there's a power cut. And you know, you think at night it's dark, but it's not really because there's lots of lights on. But when there's literally no power, it's really dark. Um <clears throat> Could be a sandstorm it definitely fits the timing of march april pace of time okay it was very intense we know that it was a heavy darkness but if it was a sandstorm that the egyptians would have been used to you know even an eclipse or something you know it's not it's not that shocking hailstones with fire in is shocking or even without fire in just you know a barrage of hail especially in the middle east would be shocking um you know plague of locusts on a scale never seen before would be shocking but so it's dark. Maybe there was an eclipse of the sun or something. You know, what? what's the big deal? So the answer is more to it than that. Let's have a look at Dianu. Dianu, no, we're not going to look at Dianu. Sorry, I'm just going to quote Dianu. It says, "If he had not ilu 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 asabem shifatim, right? If he had executed judgment against them, lo asaba elohehem Dianu, but not done so against their gods, it would have been enough for us." So when Diana, when we go through the 15 steps of redemption, one of them is one of them is um, judgment against his gods. Um, sorry, one of them is judgment against the Egyptians. And the next one is judgment against their gods. Oh, of course, <laughs> because Ra, the sun god, was being eclipsed. Um, ah, well done. Right. Hmm. Hmm. So let's just have a quick look at the 10th plague and then we'll go backwards because you're quite right. And we'll also look at the first two. Um, the Nile was a god as well. Yes, indeed. Anybody know where the name Pharaoh comes from? Sorry, not Pharaoh, Ramesses. Well, it's Ra. It, part it's of it. similar to Moses, isn't it? Right, Ra, right. Ra, yes, Ra, is, is their sun um, god. And Messis, Messis apparently means son of. So son of God, basically. You know, a, a God-like figure, a divine. That's what they saw the pharaohs as being. So, so yes, um, there's, a, there's a whole symbolism to that, right? We had it, by the way, with sheep as well. They say the Egyptians used to worship sheep, like the same way that cows are revered in India. So when Yosef comes to Pharaoh and says, you know, my family are shepherds, he says, and I know that that's really offensive to you, so therefore... I wouldn't expect you to allow them to, you know, tend their sheep um, here, basically. Um, you know, we'll do that outside of Egypt, right? The blood of the lambs on the first, you know, the doorpost is, is very symbolic because it's it's slating, quite literally slaughtering their sacred cows, <laughs> right? You say to somebody, this is your God, this is what I think of him, right? Obviously, we don't believe in those gods with a small g, but to that person, that's highly, highly inflammatory. So let's just look at the 10th plague for a minute. <clears throat> what does God say about the, let's see the 10th plague. Oh, what's happened? <laughs> Sorry, one sec. Something's gone wrong here. I've got the wrong. Oh, I, I got an extra one. Right, okay. Number three is wrong, right? Uh, please do read number four. Ignore number three. It's wrong. Who would like to read number four? I'll, I'll read it if you like. <laughs> yeah. I will pass through Egypt on that night and I will kill every firstborn in Egypt. 
man and animal, I will perform acts of judgment against all the gods of Egypt. I alone am God. So vengeance on the god of Egypt, it seems. And let's just see again. What does it say afterwards? Let's see. Go on, I will pass. These are both references that we read about in Seder. Who'd like to read that one? Pam, do you want to read? Yeah. I will pass through it. Oh, hang on. Oh, sorry. I meant to move it on. Oh, oh wait, what's going on here? Oh, something's gone wrong here. Sorry. It's okay. I misquoted it. I quoted it wrong. Right. I'll tell you what it should say. It should say the Egyptians were burying all their firstborn. They struck down by the Lord and against their gods, he executed judgment. So this idea of executing judgment against them and their gods. So that's the plagues generally and the 10th plague specifically. Now, so let's just look for a minute. So there's this idea of retribution and judgment inherent in the plagues. Um, not all plagues were directed at the Egyptian people. So the first two plagues, the Nile was, I won't, you don't need to know what the names of all these gods. So there was an ancient god called Happy, apparently, who was the source of fertility. That was the river. Um, they would make offerings to the river at times of need. Um, that's so for the river to be tainted was a, you know, I think that's why Pharaoh used to bathe in the river, by the way. Does that sound right? Because was, the Egyptians worshipped the waters. So to, 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 to attack the river was very symbolic, right? Um, Plague of Frogs. Has anyone here read? I know Debbie, I think you, did you tell me you have? Has anyone read The Red Tent? Yeah. 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 I, yeah. It's historic. It's, it's an interesting book. It's historically extremely inaccurate, yeah. but it's a very, inter very interesting book. So yeah, the they talk about these on things. television we watched. Right. So I didn't know it was on TV, but I have read the book. Yeah. I, whatever. I don't think it's, Hello. it's not, it's, it's certainly not accurate according to the Torah, but it's an interesting book. So it's there they talk about this. So they had this goddess called Heket, who was a, evidently had the head of a frog, who was a mid, you know, the, the 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 patron saint of midwives type of thing. So again, frogs would have been symbolic. Blood and frogs would have symbolized Egyptian gods, besides for anything else they might have symbolized. So that was very much a, you know, I can get your gods, your gods are nothing, dot or dot, right? Um so the purpose of the plagues was not just to punish power and his people, but to show them that their gods have no power. You know, your gods you think have so much power. The water, frogs, uh, the idea of, uh, you know, they are nothing. Your gods are myth. They can be easily, uh, easily uh, discredited, as we see. Whereas our god can't do that. And what our god represents as well, Torah, ethics principles monotheism can't be diluted either so you and i might not see the river turn to blood and think oh that's a shtef that's one in the eye for the egyptian gods but they certainly would have would have um the egyptians certainly would have got it now interestingly here's a thought when the magicians when it says that the magicians for the first two plagues were not phased, right? It's only when the plague of lice occurs that magicians suddenly say, this is the work of God. Why is that? So there's a suggestion because since they worship the river and since they worship this uh, goddess that had the head of a frog, look, if the river turns to blood or suddenly there's frogs everywhere, they would just shrug their shoulders and say, our gods must be angry with us. And this is how they take it out on us, Right. So if you're going to say to me, didn't they know that these gods had no powers? The answer probably is that they did have certain types of black magic that they practiced. But the Torah doesn't say black magic doesn't work. It says you shouldn't do it. So they clearly well, did the, the magicians were able to turn their their staves into snakes, right. weren't they? I don't, I have no idea how you do that, by the way. But, you know, the occult and the, yeah. So they did have techniques that they used. So it's, it's, the first two, they say, no, 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 the water turned to blood. Obviously, the Nile god is angry with us, right? The land is swung with frogs. Obviously, Hecate, the goddess, is trying to send us a message. We're covered in lice. That one's not in our book of 
gods and deities. That's strange. This must be the work of the Jewish gods. That's one, one angle for the Egyptians. That's why it's only when it comes to the lice that they said this is the finger of God, but Pharaoh's heart still stiffened. He didn't listen as God had said. So that's symbolism for the Egyptians. So on the one hand, it's more symbolic because of it represents the slaughtering of the sacred cows. On the other hand, they might possibly rationalize it by saying these acts clearly are connected to our gods who are angry with us. Interesting. Sorry, the magicians at least. But come the third plague, it doesn't fit with their worldview. So then they suddenly say, this is the finger of God. What is the symbolism for us? Okay, very different. I mean, the classic explanation given for the first two plagues, by the way, is what's one of the most important things we learn from the first two plagues? They all know. I'll give you a clue. Who was the agent for them? Uh, uh, Moses. Nope. No, Aaron. Yep. Why? It doesn't say explicitly in the Torah, but it's a well-known Devar Torah if you've heard it. Because he was, uh, he used to stutter, he had a speech impediment. No. Nope. Don't think that was the issue. He didn't have to speak, he had to stretch out his hands and stuff. Oh. And his staff. No, it's it's a much more moral reason than that. Well, I'll give you a clue. They have a saying nowadays, gratitude, it's an attitude. <clears throat> oh, Moses was um, uh, was put in a basket in the Nile, and so it would have been ungrateful to, um, uh, to do anything to the Nile, which had projected him as a baby. Right. That is correct. So even though it's only a stupid river at the end of the day, it's, it's only a, as quite literally a dumb river it's not a animate object but still the fact that the waters protected him and kept him safe it would be a uh, churlish for him to then turn around and smite the waters what about the frogs why couldn't Moshe be responsible for the frogs So if I recall correctly, I think it's the same reason. Doesn't it say they all came out the river? I think it's the same reason. Anyway, that's one of the other things we learned. But the point is for the Egyptians. One second. Do you want to go and get yourself out? Okay, I'm just in my show. Okay, you get your own breakfast. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll fix this. Excuse us a minute. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Bye bye. So, um, let's talk about the tenth plague for a minute. Tenth plague is demonstrating the. Do you ever think about the reason for the tenth plague? By the way, I didn't think about it till today, and the symbolism of it. Anyone? Anyone? Want to hazard a a, a thought? It's um, handing on the leadership um, of the family or the nation or whatever but yes why target the firstborn probably sons the answer is not one that fits in with the lot in my name book by the way about religious violence I'm afraid the answer is very simple remember what, what did Pharaoh do early on why was motion the river in the first place well because the the sons were being born. killed right para said i will kill all the baby boys mm. so the 10th plague it seems is basically divine retribution retributive retributive justice it's measure for measure now you may say that's barbaric the only thing i would say to you is this let's have a look at this quote from bracious this is from the book of noah to noah hide law after the after the uh after the flood who would like to read I haven't read yet. Go on. Whoever sheds human blood by human hand shall that one's blood be shed. For in the image of God was humankind made. Seems like a contradiction, right? Humankind was made in the image of God and therefore you can't take life. But whoever sheds blood, their blood shall be shed. This is not talking about uh, 
vigilante justice is talking about the death penalty in the base den for somebody who murdered somebody. So that's the idea that there is there is a concept of retributive justice, to be quite blunt. It's it's measure for measure. It's midah connected midah. Right? It's eye for an eye, actually. What does Pharaoh do? Pharaoh tells the midwives to kill the Israelite babies, and when that fails, he says to throw them in the water. Right? Let's just read that to remind ourselves. Who would like to read number eight? I don't know who can see the I screen. I haven't read yet. Yeah. Lisa Beryl, if any of you can see, please speak up. Jeff, go on. Then <laughs> Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every boy that is born, you shall throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. So Pharaoh himself turns something that should be a symbol of life, the river that gives water and agriculture and midwives. Midwives bring life into this world. And what does Pharaoh do? He, he turns them on their head. Yeah. He says the Nile is now going to become a place of death. Jewish boys and babies and the midwife is going to become an agent of horror right he wasn't successful if you recall because he said we can't do it but he wanted them to so what happens to the first two plagues they invert that and they say well these two things that you wanted to harness for your nefarious goals no that's not true look my god our god can smite them he can smite the river he can turn it into make frogs infest the land so are these really, I mean, obviously, if you need to have a drink and there's blood in the water, you've got a problem. But ultimately, are these really, you know, as as, as serious as death of the firstborn or uh, locusts destroying all the crops? Are they more symbolic? The answer is they're symbolic. They're, code, they're in code. Saying to the Egyptians, you know, we are gods bigger than your god. <laughs> right? All the things that you think are sacred, we can turn on their heads. And if but the Egyptians how, how, choose... can, how can how can you manage without water? I don't know. That's a good question. I was wondering that. It is quite serious, isn't it? Well, they probably yeah, had enough serious. wine to last them until the water came back fresh again. Hmm. Okay. And I think they um, made beer as well in Egypt. Do we know how long the, the plague of blood lasted? One sec, sorry. Sorry, just sending someone a message that can't speak. Right. Um, <clears throat> so there's a whole symbolism that these, the two things that are smitten are the things that on the one hand represent life and you know goodness and uh, uh, uh um, plenty and water you know is it life-giving and midwives bring babies into this world and pharaoh's taking them and harnessing them for evil and then god comes on and says well you know actually <laughs> you know i'm bigger than your gods uh or alternatively egyptians might themselves think that their own gods are rebelling whichever way it is <laughs> the 10th plague though The 10th plague was already predicted earlier on. They all know this? Hmm. God said to Moses very early on, let's see what he said. Who would like to read? Well, I didn't read much before, so I'll read again. Go on, you can have some more. Yes, right. You, you shall say to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says. Israel is my son, my firstborn. I have told you to let my son go that he may worship me. If you refuse to let him go, I will kill your own firstborn son. Right, pretty strong stuff. When was that well, said? I, at what stage? That's way back at the beginning, when he's telling him that you're going to go to Pharaoh. Like way back before any of started. Right. One second. Before the first plague, yeah, like at the beginning of his mission. It's interesting to know how each plague, how long it lasted. I'm thinking of the the boys being killed. 
Uh, right. Well, wasn't it all all done at um, midnight on the the night of Passover? That was yes, yes, that was yes. But this is way back. Let me just look this up a sec. This is right at the beginning of. Um, yeah, it's it's basically God saying this is what's going to happen before even it, any of it starts. So the first two plagues, unfortunately, have a connection to the Egyptian murder of Israelite children. Right, we said the 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 water that the boys were thrown into, the midwives, the frogs represented the midwife in this Egyptian uh, um, what do you call it? L l law, folklore, yeah, uh, um, that. Um, And then the tenth plague finally is is full circle. It's retributive justice. It's heaven saying you committed or supported or at least accepted the murder of my children. The only way you'll ever realize that what you did wrong is that you have to suffer the same fate. Right? Very harsh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you could ask lots of questions on that. You probably relate it to modern events as well. Mm -hmm. But that seems to be the thinking. You know, you you cast my children into the sea. I'll let you see how it feels. Um, it's harsh. It's harsh. There are two words we find used to refer to plagues. Um, anyone know what they are? I say them a lot in Haggadah. Two words. Signs and wonders. Um, I think they're used a few times in Haggadah. So it's, it's, I'll use. I'll say in Ivrit. Otot umoftim, osos umosim. An os, an ot is a sign. You should put your tefillin as a sign upon your hand. Yeah. And a mofos is a is a wonder, like something wondrous that's like supernatural. So it's not the same thing. They're not a, a mofos is something that's miraculous, and os is a sign of something that's a code of communication. So some of the plagues are just like bizarre. You know, supernatural phenomena like hailstones falling with fire in them, and some are more symbolic. So the frogs, the blood turning, the water turning to blood. Yes, I mean it is miraculous in itself, but it's more the symbolism of it than the actual kind of long-term effect. So the ninth play, going back to darkness. Yes, there's such a thing as heavy darkness. There's mental health. There's a black mood. There's so many aspects to that, but. In simple terms, if, if it seems like quite a low-level sort of plague, the answer is it's the symbolism of it. And symbolism is what Vi um, Iris correctly picked up on. The, the greatest, evidently, the, the king of all the gods for Egypt was the sun god, who was called over him to say Ra. As we said, Ramesses, like Moses, yes. So um, the child of the sun god. Um, and evidently he was like their Zeus, their king of the gods. Um, so the plague of darkness was saying, You think the sun is your power source, the sun is your god, but our god can do what he likes and he can get rid of your god just like that, right? But there's also symbolism to it, it's saying that you, Paro, have created this terrible dictatorship, you have created this society. Remember, the people were begging him to let the Israelites go, right. But he's all powerful. He knows better. What's the end result? They lost thousands. Doesn't it sound very, by the way, I mean, doesn't it sound very topical? You know, everyone's blaming Israel for what's going on in Gaza. Nobody's blaming Hamas. Right? For leadership in Gaza would surrender and give up the hostages, there'd be no more war. Right? Unfortunately, you have a, a powerful leadership that, that is dictatorial and the people suffer. So you've got the same thing here with Pharaoh. His people are suffering. But there's an interesting dimension to it. The suggestion is that they were bystanders. They went along with it, right? It wasn't Pharaoh wasn't the only one. All these Jewish boys getting cast into the Nile, well, somebody was doing it, right? He didn't do it all on his own. So somebody was following orders. So they're not completely innocent. They're part of the problem. So when God says, tells Moshe to say to Pharaoh, my son, my firstborn Israel, saying, I'm God who actually, I look after my children. I don't kill my children. But more than that, if you have physical darkness, then it's it's symbolic, as somebody said, of other types of darkness. So on. There's such a thing as moral darkness. Let's see Rabbi Sachs on this. 
who would like to read Now I Sex, who hasn't read for a while? I can read with my... Go on. My cooking's done now. <laughs> when God to told Moses to say to Pharaoh, my son, my firstborn, Israel, he was saying, I am the God who cares for his children, not one who kills his children. The ninth, uh -huh. plague, <clears throat> the ninth plague was a divine act of communication that said there is not only physical darkness, but also moral darkness. The best test of a civilization is to see how it treats children, its own and others. In an age of broken families, neglected and impoverished children and worse, the use of children as instruments of war, that is a lesson we still need to learn. Oh, quite topical, really. <laughs> Very topical. <laughs> yeah. right. The only question I've got lingering is, but in all of this, the plague of the, fir the firstborn is just retribution, is surely also take out <clears> the children. So that one seems a bit hard. Unless you could say, again, the metaphor is that unfortunately it's the innocent children that do suffer. It's unavoidable. Don't know. But so you see, there's a lot of symbolism to all the plagues. You know, it's not straightforward. It's not just, uh, you know, there's a reason for the frogs, there's a reason for the blood, there's a reason for the darkness. They have deep symbolism. But the fact that what's going on at the moment includes children is um, is very apt, isn't it? Yeah. Unfortunately. And there's no answer to it. No, well, the answer, as I said, is a proper ceasefire, but it has to be a ceasefire that actually involves people laying down their arms properly, not just as a ruse. So it, people say if Hamas <laughs> would lay down their arms, dot, 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 you know, the Egyptians did it, the Jordanians did it. The thing is, they've never done it because their whole ideology is to, to, not just to destroy Israel, <laughs> but to dis destroy... Way. <laughs> no, not just destroy Israel, but destroy world Jewry at all costs. So it's a difficult one to really see how there will ever be a way out of it. I mean, I don't particularly believe the Palestinian Authority is a peace partner either, but at least they've made pretensions about it over the years. Hamas have never made any pretensions. 